Hello friends, welcome to the Take Better Photos channel. In June, Capture One for the iPhone was launched, and this joins a growing field of iPhone RAW editors. Never before has there been so many options for RAW editing on your iPhone. But with more choices, you get more confusion. So in this video, we'll be trying to help clear up the confusion by comparing Capture One for the iPhone with another recently released editor Photomator to see which is the better iPhone RAW editor. So let's get right into it. First, let's take a look at what Capture One has to say about its mobile app. Capture One says its iPhone app lets you enjoy the speed, mind-blowing image quality, and colors, and collaboration tools of Capture One anywhere you want, and it fits in your pocket. It claims its colors are incredible, true to life and hand calibrated. So as you would expect, a lot of superlatives here, but how does it compare to Photomator? In terms of price, there is a big disparity in favor of Photomator. Capture One costs $5 per month subscription, but that does not include the desktop app. Photomator also costs $5 a month, but you can also get it for 20 something dollars a year and both includes the desktop app in addition to the mobile app. By the way, check out my many reviews on Photometer for the Mac on this channel. In terms of the interface, both are easy to use. The main drawback of Capture One is you can only adjust one slider at a time, requiring extra steps when performing multiple editing adjustments. Also, the scrolling with Capture One is in my opinion a little bit too wide. You have to swipe multiple times to reach one end to the other. Why they didn't just copy the slider UI they have in their desktop is beyond me. But I think that would have been the better option. Photometer's interface is far superior and the best among iPhone RAW editors in my opinion. They show all the sliders at once, similar to Lightroom's, and there is no need to go through multiple menus just to get to a particular control. It's a far superior experience with Photometer, but if that's not enough, their interface is the same across all its platforms, both Mac and mobile. It's very well thought out and a super easy learning curve. Another thing nice about Photometer is you can edit in both portrait and landscape. Capture One only supports the portrait orientation. In terms of functionality, they are very similar. They have the essential tone adjustments like highlights, shadows, contrast, support perspective corrections, selective color adjustments, clarity adjustments, and so forth. So let's take a look at some of the advantages of each. What makes Photometer stand out over Capture One? Well, it is its AI-based masking, such as Select Sky and Select Subject, which Capture One has no equivalent of. In fact, Capture One does not have any local adjustments to speak of AI or otherwise in its iPhone app. This allows Photometer for iPhone to make precise adjustments that you could not do with Capture One. On the other hand, for Capture One, what makes it stand out is the dynamic range of its controls. It's able to recover highlights and shadows in bad lighting conditions better than Photometer. But all these features are only good as the image quality they produce so let's now do a slideshow comparison of images and as usual, I've edited both images similarly, though I've applied local adjustments in Photometer since that is its standout feature and Capture One does not provide this. At the end, I'll give my conclusion on which one gives the best results.
So I hope you enjoyed the slideshow comparison. As you can see, both Capture One and Photometer give excellent image quality. I will say though that the winner in image quality is Capture One for several reasons. First, the images in general were sharper and more detailed than Photometer. You can see it in this edit, where in Photometer, while it produced excellent colors, in Capture One, the result after the shadow adjustment produced better contrast than Photometer. You could also see the difference in this image. Here is Photometer's edit, and here is Capture One's edit. So Capture One's shadow adjustments simply produces clearer, crisper details than Photometer. And I did not apply any sharpening with Capture One. I suspect it has something to do with the processing of Photometer, wherein the shadow processing somehow reduces the contrast a little bit compared to Capture One. Another reason Capture One will produce better images, and I've mentioned this before, but Photometer does not go far enough to correct this type of lighting, even though this was a raw file and the data is actually present. As you can see here, the color cast has not been corrected sufficiently. It would be nice if you could still bring back the detail a little bit more in the highlights. For Capture One, it had no issues correcting extreme cast. And as you can see in the highlights, it was able to recover the detail adequately. That being said, Photometer beats out Capture One in situations where the image would benefit from local adjustments in an image. For example, here, I was able to bring down the brightness of the sky in Photometer more significantly without affecting the exposure of the foreground. And that's because I used AI masks on the sky. In Capture One, that would not be possible to do. So to summarize, get Capture One if you want the best quality edits on an iPhone and you don't find that local adjustments or AI masks are critical to your edits. Conversely, get Photometer if you want greater value in your photo editor you want the $5 price to include both mobile and desktop and need the precise AI masking in your editing. So I hope you found this video helpful. Do let me know who you think the winner was. I'd love to hear from you. And if you like this content, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to help keep the videos coming. Until the next video, I'm going to see you in the next one. Bye for now.